G'day guys, it's Stux from the TrueNAS forums. TrueNAS Scale Dragonfish has just been released, and I thought it'd be a good idea to go through one of the major new features, sandboxes. Sandboxes allow you to install a separate Linux installation on top of your existing TrueNAS installation. This means we can use the sandbox, which you can think of as a Linux equivalent to FreeBSD's jails, to implement a Docker machine, which will allow us to replace TrueNAS's Kubernetes app layer with something with far less overhead. But the best part of sandboxes, which are built on top of systemd nspawn containers, is that you can bind mount your datasets into the container for full speed access, which is something you can't do with virtual machines on TrueNAS. Another major benefit is that the resources are shared between the sandbox and the host, thus allowing full memory and CPU sharing without having to pre-commit resources like you would with a VM. This means we can use the sandbox, which you can think of as a Linux equivalent to FreeBSD's jails to implement a Docker machine, which will allow us to replace TrueNAS's Kubernetes app layer with something with far less overhead. Now, I'm going to show how to set up a stacks-based Docker machine using Dockage. That is, we'll be using Docker Compose to compose our application stacks. I prefer Dockage to Potena, as it's really just a compose editor, and the actual compose files are stored safely on your pool, rather than in an opaque Portainer file system. This is the uh, TrueNAS documentation for sandboxes. Basically, make a jailmaker, dataset, install jailmaker, and set it to startup. I install it slightly differently because I like to clone it. This is the uh, GitHub Jailmaker repository. All of the links will be in the description. And this is the Dockage homepage. I've also got some of the uh, networking uh, documents already open. And finally, I'll set up a Jellyfin application because I think it's a very useful application which can be quite difficult to install the first time. So this is a test TrueNAS um, installation that I have running in a virtual machine that I'll be using to demonstrate today. Firstly, let's check the network configuration. You'll see I have a single interface. Now, if you have a bridge interface set up, then things work slightly differently, but I will go through both scenarios. So firstly, we need to make some data sets. We'll need a data set for Jailmaker. And we will also want a data set for Docker, which we will be installing inside Jailmaker. Now, I like to make two data sets in my Docker data sets. One is for the data, which is the data used by the things that we install inside Docker. And the other is a stacks data set, which will contain our application configurations, which will be managed by Dockage. This means that you can easily back up the data in different ways. Now that we've created our data sets, Docker, Data, Stacks, and Jailmaker, we can begin the Jailmaker installation process. Now, I'm going to go to the GitHub Jailmaker page. I'm clicking on code, and I'm copying the clone URL. Now, we go to our shell, CD mount tank, Jailmaker, git clone, paste, period. And that will clone into this directory. Now, what we can do is do colon slash jailmaker.py install, which will install jailmaker. Now, it does mention that we should source the ZCRH manually, like so. Well, now we can just type jailmaker list, and you'll see that there are no jails created. The next step is we need to set Jailmaker to run at startup. And the way you do that is you go to System Settings Advanced, Init Shut Down Scripts, Add, Start, Jailmaker. My Jailmaker script is a command, and it's installed on my tank. And the Jailmaker dataset is called jailmaker.py, and the startup command is startup, which will basically install Jailmaker if necessary, and then start any jails which are configured to start. That has to be a post init command, it may take some time, so we set the timeout to 30 seconds. And that should mean that Jailmaker is now configured to start up when the system starts up. You should test that later. Now we can public the shell, and by doing Jailmaker list, you can see that there are no jails. What we want to do is set up a Docker jail. So we will go to the GitHub for Jailmaker, go to the templates, Docker, config, and in here we copy that whole template and come back to our shell. Jailmaker create. Yes, we would like to create using a config template. Why? Okay, we open the text there. This is a nano instance. Paste our uh, 
scripting. Since it's Nano, we can press Control Y to scroll to the top. Now you want startup to be zero. I am not going to pass through an Intel GPU at the moment, so I set that to zero, NVIDIA zero. Now, what we want to do here is ensure that the network Mac VLAN is set to the name or interface. Mine is ENS3. If you are using a bridge interface, this will have to be set to network bridge and your bridge interface name. We will configure the bind mounts later. Save. Uh, we're going to call this Docker and we want to start it now. Now, this will go and download uh, essentially a Debian distribution to create the jail. All right, jail make a list. We can see our jails running. If you had a network issue, your jail would have just failed to start. You can fix this by running jailmaker edit docker. This will bring up the configuration and you need to adjust the configuration here until it works. So when you do that, you can then do jailmaker restart or start docker. Jailmaker shell docker will enter the shell of the sandbox. IPA shows us our network address. You probably want to have a static IP address. If you have a router with a DHCP server, the best way to do this is to simply go to your router, find that MAC address there, and then set that to be a static IP address. I'm not going to do that. As this is a uh, MAC VLAN network, we want to follow these instructions here. I'm going to copy that. CD slash etc slash system D slash network. We want to edit the MVDHCP file. Nano. Now, Nano isn't installed. You could use VI, but the best thing to do is just install Nano. By typing apt install Nano, mvdhcp.network. Go down to the network thing. I like to comment what was already there, and then I can paste in the change, which turns off the DHCP false. We need to enter the IP address we would like. I'm gonna use 1.22 and my router is at 1.1. Now, I reboot the sandbox. And we can see that we have our static IP address. Now, jailmaker stop docker. I'll show you what happens if you try to set up a Mac VLAN address when you're using a bridge system. But to do that, I'm going to have to set up a bridge. And now we have our bridge set up. We go back to our jail. We try to start our jail. We'll see it fails to start. This is how you fix that. Jailmaker edit docker. Come down to where it says network Mac VLAN. We have to change this to bridge. And we have to use our bridge name. Control X, yes, return. And now we can try once more and we'll find our Docker starts up. You can shell into the Docker and check the IP. You'll notice that we don't have an IP address here because this is now connecting via DHCP. So I'm going to watch the IP address function, watch IPA, until we acquire an IP address, which can take a little while. And now we have one. It's this address here, 192.168.164. Just check that all the networking is working, and it is. What we need to do is follow the Jailmaker networking document, which tells us to configure a static IP address. We want to do this in the AD container host zero network file in the network directory of system D. AD. It's there, paste the new lines, adjust your address, don't forget your gateway, reboot the docker, re-enter it. You can see we have our static IP address. So the next thing we want to do is install dockage. What we want to do is bind our data sets that we created before. So we come down to the user args here, bind mount tank docker data. And we want that to be bound to slash mount data in the jail. And we want to bind our tank docker stacks data set 
two slash opt stacks. This is just how I like to do it, and it's also how Dockage likes it to be done. Once we've done that, we can restart Algera. We can go to the stacks directory on the shell here, and we can make a test file. We can see that we've now got a test file in our stacks. If we now enter the jail and go to cd slash opt stacks, you can see our test files here. And if we were to make a file here, touch inside sandbox and exit, then we can see that the same file is on our pool. I want RM those. Uh, yes. Back to our jail. We go to dockage. Dockage is pretty cool. There's an installation script. So we copy that. We're going to write an install script. No, no, install dockage shell. And we just paste that in. Yes, control X, Y, save. And now we can just have shell, install dockage shell. And dockage is now running and installed. So if we go to the IP address that we set up, call in 5001, we'll log into the dockage, now set a username and password. And this is the dockage user interface. You may want your jail to start up when you start your system. So jailmaker edit docker, set this to one, We don't have to actually restart for now. But that is the last time you need to touch the sandbox. Now that you have Dockage installed, you can easily compose compositions. For instance, this is a more or less a Hello World version of Nginx. We give it a name, maybe we save it. That will appear in our stacks directory and we can actually start it. And it will pull down the Nginx container configure it on port 8080 and start it. And if we click the 8080 there, we go straight to it. And you can see we are now running an Nginx instance on our, in our sandbox on TrueNAS. You can update that by just clicking update and it will update. And you can even delete it. Okay, so to demonstrate setting up a Jellyfin installation, we shall install Jellyfin. Jellyfin. Let's see, installation, container installation, and we will use the Linux server IO image because it has hardware acceleration for transcoding. Go to the Linux server Jellyfin container page, and there should be a compose file towards the bottom. Here it is. Copy that. Go to Dockage, Compose, Jelly Fin. We can just paste our file here. Now, we are going to need a user because this is user ID and group ID. So we go back to our TrueNAS, credentials, local users, add a new user, call it Jelly Fin. Make a secure password. You can look at credentials and you'll see that Jellyfin is user 3001 and a group 3003. So going back to dockage, 3001, group is 3003. Now, we also need to create a config volume. So going back to the data sets, in our Docker data, add a new data set, call it Jellyfin. And in there, we'll add a data set called config. I do that because it's quite possible that you'll want to set up, while we're here, let's make another one called transcodes. This will make sense later. 
So we need to set the permissions. Owner is Jellyfin. Back to dockage here. Now, we mounted our data in data. So mount data slash jellyfin slash config. It's in the config directory. And we also want to mount the transcodes as transcodes. Now, we have a media. And that will just be straight into data. I'll save that. So what we need to do is add the media to the gel. Gel maker, edit docker. And then we will add our media as another mount. Let's mount media and we are going to mount that under media in the gel. Save that. Gel maker restart docker. And it's done. Now when docker comes back it will reconnect. There it is. So our media should be active now. And we'll update this one twenty two colon eight oh nine six. And we can start this. If we got everything right, Jellyfin should start up. Everything looks good. We can click that. Here we are, Jellyfin. Why not? Add the media library, TV shows, add a folder, we have in data, recordings, shows, look at that. Now, you may want to change where the transcodes are stored. You'll see that the transcodes are stored inside the config directory, which we don't really want to do. So instead, config data transcodes. What's interesting is if I play this recording, it will transcode. Hopefully this shows you how you can use the sandboxes. See so you guys, hopefully that helps.